We know that Scala is a general purpose programming language. It supports object oriented programming along with functional programming. So here in this video, we are going to discuss there is a property that is a closures. So closures in Scala with one sample code, its explanation and execution for the better understanding. So here is the demonstration for you. In this session, we are discussing Scala closures and we shall discuss how to define one Scala closure, what are the problems this closure can solve and examples of Scala closures and it's behind uh, it what magic and working of different data types. Now let me define what is a Scala closure. So a function whose return value depends on the variables declared outside of it will be known as a closure. So let us uh, discuss this one with one sample code. Here there is one anonymous function which has got two input parameters. So x and y of the type int and float and which returns x plus y that is the summation of them and its return value will be assigned to val total. Always remember the variable name might be obviously changing but here it should be of the type val here. So here we have defined one anonymous function where these parameters are there and we are adding those two parameters as the return value. So now how to invoke this anonymous function. So here we are passing this 20 and 30. So 20 will be assigned to x and 30 will be assigned to y respectively and in this way this anonymous function can be created and can be called here. So I am just executing this respective code and see what outcome we are going to get. So here you see these variables x and y they are within the scope of this anonymous function and in the return we have used those x and y only. But what will happen if we define one variable z which is outside of this anonymous function scope but the variable z has been used in the anonymous function body. So now I am just executing this one just see what outcome it is producing. So you see the z is having the value 5 and then we are passing this x and y as input parameters and the value which will be written will be x plus y which is locally defined and this z is defined outside of the scope of this anonymous function. But here you see we are getting the value as 250y because 20 plus 30 that is 50 and 50 into 5 so we are getting this one as 250. So what is happening you see the outcome the output argument whatever is the value is getting returned from this anonymous function is, is depending on the variables which have got defined outside of this scope of this anonymous function. So now if I change the value of z if I change the value of z and if I re-execute my code once again see what will what will be the outcome. So here you can find that 20 plus 30 that is 50 into 8 so I am getting this 400 as output. So in this particular program we have defined that that this is a uh, Scala closure we have defined because a function whose return value depends on the variables declared outside of it. So that is known as a closure here. In our example this x and y are the formal parameters this x and y are the formal parameters to the function that is the function name is here is total and now what is happening the z however it is a reference to a variable in the enclosing scope and Scala closes over z here. So that is the concept of closure. Paul Cantrell in his article on closure in Ruby mentions three criteria for a closure. So we will be discussing those three criteria right now one after another. The first criteria we can pass around the code block as a value. Second at any time anyone with the value can execute the code block and the last one it can refer to the variables from the context we created in it. So now let us go for another example on this closure for your better understanding. So just consider this one. Here we have defined one variable that is my age initialized with the value that is 35. So my age will have the uh, a type int due to the type inference in Scala. So here we are having another unnamed function. So that is an anonymous function we are having which is having only the string as input and my name my underscore name is the respective parameter name. So it 
prints it returns nothing but it prints the body something like this that is dollar my underscore name having age dollar my underscore age here you see this my and uh, my underscore age this very variable has been defined before the scope of this anonymous function but the variable has been accessed and do my underscore name it has been defined or it has been passed as the input parameter to this anonymous function so now here we are passing only this string here because i'm supposed to pass only one parameter so i'm passing this particular string here let it be tonmoy so now what is happening you can find let me execute the code let me show you that what is happening here so now you can easily find that the respective outcome is tonmoy having age 35 so this my age has been accessed from this anonymous function body next one it will be very interesting for us so let me uh, go for this so now let us take another example that is a function here the name of the function is my function that takes two arguments the first argument is a function and the second argument is a string and calls that function on that string so now let me go for the coding so here the name of the function is my function which is taking one function which takes one string as input argument which returns unit means void means nothing so the name of the function the function variable what whatever you are using this one as func and it takes a string as input argument and which returns unit that is void and another one is name of the type of string so now what we are doing we are calling this respective function so this particular func so this particular re respective function will be invoked passing this name as the input argument so now whenever i shall be calling this my function invoking this my function i am passing this hello underscore M -E -M -S -G, that is a hello message so this particular function i am calling and passing this string that is the onupom onupom as the input argument that is the second input argument so what will happen hello message will be will be invoked with this onupom as the input argument so now let me execute my code here so in the previous case we have done up to this tonmoy having age 35 so i have shown you the output up to this uh, line up to this line we have executed so now let let me execute only this part so just see here so here when this my function has been called here hello message is the first argument that is a function name and the second argument is of the type of string so what will happen in the code it is written that so only palm comma having age 35 is getting printed because this particular func name is getting executed and the func name is having the body that is this one so in this way we have shown you we have given you the idea of closure in scala programming thanks for watching this video